This video will discuss the Gibbs energy of mixing in liquid solutions. So we have the Gibbs energy, so delta G of mixing, indicated by this type of notation here. That's equal to, because the Gibbs energy is a state function, we just take the final Gibbs energy minus the initial Gibbs energy, equal to the Gibbs energy of the solution at a given temperature, pressure, and the number of moles of each component minus the sum over all those components of the Gibbs energy of the pure liquid at that temperature and pressure for the number of moles of each of those components as a pure liquid. So using the equations that we've developed from some previous videos, we have that the Gibbs energy of mixing is going to be equal to a sum over all the components of the chemical potential of that component in the solution minus the chemical potential of it in as a pure liquid times the number of moles of that substance. So it's really all about the change in chemical potential going from pure liquid to the solution. So the chemical potential of the substance in solution is equal to the chemical potential of the pure liquid plus RT times the natural log of its mole fraction. If that's true if it's ideal because this is true if it obeys Raoult's law. So R being the gas constant, T being the temperature of the solution. So then uh, the ideal Gibbs energy of mixing for our solution is going to equal, so for each component we're gonna have uh, mu star I plus RT log chi I minus mu star I. So these cancel out. What we're left with for every term is an RT log chi I. We can factor out the RT in front of the sum, so we get that it's equal to RT times the sum over all the components of the number of moles of that component times the natural log of the component of that mixture. Sorry, natural log of the mole fraction of that component. But we can make one more uh, simplification there. We have that the number of moles of each component is equal to the total number of moles times its mole fraction. So we can actually substitute n chi i for this part here, uh, pull out the n, we'd have nRT sum over i chi i log chi i. But also the molar Gibbs energy is the Gibbs energy divided by the number of moles. So we'd have nRT times the sum divided by n. So the molar ideal Gibbs energy of mixing is then going to be RT times the sum over all components of its mole fraction times the natural log of its mole fraction. So you might notice this equation to be slightly familiar uh, to an equation that we've seen before and this looks pretty similar to the Gibbs entropy formula. In fact when we get down here to the ideal molar entropy of mixing it's going to look even more familiar so let's uh, go ahead down to that. So we know that the ideal uh, entropy of mixing, the ideal molar entropy of mixing, is going to be the negative derivative of this quantity with respect to temperature as S is equal to minus dg dt. So uh, delta mix S bar ideal equals minus d delta mix G bar ideal dt at constant pressure and number of moles of every quantity. So the ideal entropy or the ideal molar entropy of mixing of a solution is equal to minus R sum over all components chi I times natural log of chi I. And this is very similar to the Gibbs entropy formula for the entropy based off the probability of various uh, microstates of the system. So similarly here if there's just one component and its mole fraction is one the entropy of mixing is zero because we have a pure liquid. If we have two, if we have two components, the entropy of mixing is highest when both of their mole fractions is 0.5, because then the uh, then the entropy of mixing is just minus r log two. R is going to be sorry, is going to be r log two. Whenever there's three components in equal mole fractions, you get r log three. So the maximum entropy of mixing in every case is going to be when the mole fraction of all components is equal to one another. And the more mole, the more components there are, the higher the entropy is going to be. 
So this is why when you mix things together, uh, things very much prefer to be mixed rather than isolated because you always get a large entropy gain whenever you're mixing things together. And as a result, the entropy gain means that your Gibbs energy is going to go down. So things are always going to be preferred to mix, th mix together and be spread out through solutions rather than to be isolated apart from one another. Okay, we have the uh, molar volume or the ideal molar volume change of mixing for a solution. That would be the partial derivative of this quantity with respect to pressure. So we notice that there's no pressure dependence of any of these terms. Mole fraction, temperature, and the gas constant are all independent of pressure. So there is no molar volume change during mixing. So ideal solutions, this is going to be true. So this is why solutions behave more ideally whenever their size and shape of their particles are approximately equal because when the size and shape of their particles are approximately equal then there's no kind of change in how well they pack together and uh, what ends up being the volume the molar volume of the solution it really doesn't change whenever you mix things together that are of a similar size and shape so the size and shape clause of ideal solutions leads to the fact that the molar uh, volume change of mixing for ideal solutions ends up being zero. All right, similarly, we know that G, the Gibbs energy, equals enthalpy minus temperature times entropy. So delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So in this case, we see that our Gibbs energy of mix, our molar Gibbs energy of mixing for an ideal solution is just minus T times the entropy of mixing. So there's nothing left over which accounts for the enthalpy. So this means that the ideal molar enthalpy of mixing for a solution is equal to zero. And that comes from the criterion that molecules have to have similar in interactions with one another. Because if they didn't have interactions with one another, then that would result in an increase or a decrease in the system's temperature, which would then be off put into uh, the surroundings as heat or absorbed from the surroundings as heat. So those two results, the ideal mixing volume change being zero because they have similar size and shape, and the ideal enthalpy change being zero because molecules have similar interactions, resulting in no uh, net absorption or release of heat upon mixing of the solution.